In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Fiat. Book of Heaven, Volume 29, Part 8 May 31st, 1931 The happiness of Jesus is to find his creature in the divine will. God plunges himself into the creature, and the creature into God. The Tiny Little House of Nazareth My abandonment in the divine volition continues, and my poor mind pauses now at one point, now at another, as though wanting to take rest in each effect of the divine will. In fact, though its act is one, its effects are innumerable, so much so that I never arrive at finding them all, much less at comprehending them, and therefore seeing that it is not given to me to embrace them all, being too little, I pause in one of its effects, to enjoy it and rest. And my sweet Jesus, who takes so much pleasure in finding me in his adorable will, pausing in order to breathe it as life, told me, My daughter, how sweet it is for me to find you in my divine will, and not like those creatures who are in it by force, by necessity, and because they cannot do without it. And while they are in it, they do not know it, nor do they love it or appreciate it. But in finding you, I find you voluntarily. You know it and love it, and you reach the point of finding your sweet rest. I feel so drawn toward you, more so since the very power of my will imposes itself on your Jesus to reveal myself. And I am unable to deny anything to her, because I could say that the only happiness that comes to me from the earth is to find the creature in my divine will. And when I find her, I want to repay her for the happiness that she gives me. First, by rendering her happy. And then, by preparing her 
and disposing her to do and act in my will. I prepare the space for it, because the greatness, the sanctity, the power that an act done in it contains is so great that the creature could not contain it if I did not give her the capacity. Therefore, one who lives in my will is inseparable from me, because while she has done one act, I must prepare her for the next act. More so, since I never leave the creature at one point, but I make her always grow, until I am able to say, I have no more to give her. I am content, for I have given her everything. In fact, you must know that every time the creature doesn't act in my divine will, she plunges herself into it, and God plunges himself into the creature. So, in plunging into each other, God communicates his new act never interrupted and the human will remains at the mercy of the divine will, and feels new love, new power, new freshness, with all the divine refreshments, in such a way that in each act she feels herself being reborn again in the divine life. Without losing what she has received in the other acts, she acquires and incorporates into herself the new life that has been communicated to her. So much so that she feels herself growing, being nourished with a new growth and with new foods. So one who lives in our will acquires ever new knowledges of her creator, and the new knowledge brings her the current of the continuous new act that God possesses. Don't you see the heavens, the stars, the sun? Do you perhaps see any change in them? Or after so many centuries, are they not always fresh, beautiful, new, as they were created? And why? Because they are under the empire of the creative strength of our fiat, which created them and remained in them as perennial life. Therefore, the permanence of my will in the creature produces with its dominating empire new life of patience of prayer, of peace, of sacrifice, and of infinite joys. That which my will is, so it wants to render one who lives in it. Then I continued to think about the divine volition, and my sweet Jesus added, My daughter, when my divine will emits an act, it never draws it back. On the contrary, it makes itself perennial life of its act. The very creation says this. By doing continuously those acts which my will placed in it in creating it, created things can be called the repeaters of the acts of my divine will. The heavens are always stretched out. They never withdraw from any point. And by remaining always stretched out, they always do repeated acts of divine will. The sun always gives light and is all busy performing the innumerable acts of divine will that were entrusted to it in its light. 
and as it gives color and fragrance to each flower, multiple sweetness and taste to the fruits, development to the plants, light and heat to each creature, and many other acts that it does. So many acts of divine will does it keep performing. It seems to do its course with all ruling majesty in performing so many acts entrusted to it. True symbol of the majestic and ruling way of my will. The sea, as it murmurs, the water, as it gives itself to creatures, the earth, as it becomes green and produces plants and flowers, so many multiple acts of my will do they perform. My will is the motor of everything, and keeps all creation in act of doing its will. And this is why they are all happy. They never lose their place of honor, nor are they subject to dying. Because my will operating in created things gives them perennial life. Only the creature, the one who was to make the greatest display in doing a continued act of my will, is the only one that goes out of the motor of it and reaches the point of placing herself against a will so holy. What sorrow! And what an account will she not have to give me! My sweet Jesus remained silent, and withdrawing, he left me in the light of his will. And oh, how many things I comprehended! But who can say them all? More so, since in it one speaks with celestial terms. And in finding myself inside myself, I must adapt the celestial terms to the human. And fearing I might make a mess, I content myself with moving forward, hoping that if Jesus wants it, he will adapt himself to speaking with the terms of the low world. After this I continued my acts in the divine fiat, and my poor mind paused in the little house of Nazareth, where the Queen of Heaven, the celestial King Jesus, and St. Joseph were in possession of and lived in the kingdom of the divine will. So this kingdom is not foreign to the earth. The house of Nazareth, the little family that lived in it, belonged to this kingdom and kept it in full force. But while I was thinking about this, my great king, Jesus, told me, My daughter, Indeed, the kingdom of my divine will has existed upon earth, and therefore there is the sure hope that it will return again to its full force. Our house of Nazareth was its true kingdom. However, we were without peoples. Now you must know that each creature is a kingdom. Therefore, one who lets the divine will reign within herself can be called a little kingdom of the supreme fiat. So, she is a tiny little house of Nazareth that we have upon earth. And though little, since our will is in her reigning, heaven is not closed for her. She observes the same laws of the celestial fatherland. She loves with the same love, feeds herself with the foods from up there, 
and is incorporated into the kingdom of our interminable regions. Now, in order to form the great kingdom of our will upon earth, first, we will make the many little tiny houses of Nazareth, that is, the souls who will want to know it, in order to let it reign within themselves. I myself and the Sovereign Queen will be at the head of these tiny little houses, because we, having been the first to possess this kingdom on earth, it is our right, which we will not surrender to anyone, to be the directors of them. And then, with these tiny little houses, repeaters of our house of Nazareth, we shall form many little states of ours, many provinces, which, after they have been formed well, and ordered like many little kingdoms of our will, shall fuse together, and will form one single kingdom, and one great people. Therefore, in order to have our greatest works, our way of acting is to begin, first alone, one-on-one, -on -one with one single creature. When we have formed this one, we make her a channel in order to enclose in our work two or three more creatures. Then we expand, forming a small group, and then we expand it so much as to take the whole entire world. Our works begin in the isolation of God and the soul, and end by continuing their life in the midst of entire peoples. And when there is the beginning of a work of ours, it is the sure sign that it will not die at birth. At the most, it may live hidden for some time, but then it will go out and shall have its perennial life. Therefore always forward do I want you in my divine will. Fiat June 5th, 1931. How it is necessary to make friends in the good times. Sorrow of Jesus because of the abandonment of the apostles. The human will, prison of the creature. I am always in the sea of the supreme volition. Oh, how many beautiful things are found in it! There are all the acts of Jesus, as though in act. There are those of the Sovereign Lady. There are those of our Celestial Father, which he has done and which he will do. It is a sea, not divided, but one interminable. It is everything. In this sea there are no dangers, nor fears of falling, because the happy creature that enters into it lays down her guises and takes on the divine guises. So while I was in this sea, my sweet Jesus made present to me, when, in his passion, the apostles dispersed themselves. They ran away from him, leaving him alone and abandoned in the midst of the enemies. And my highest good Jesus told me, My daughter, the greatest sorrow that I had in my passion the nail that most pierced my heart was the abandonment and the dispersion of my apostles. 
I had not a friendly eye in which I could reflect my gaze. The abandonment, the offenses, the indifference of friends, surpass, oh, how much, all the sorrows, and even the death that enemies can give. I knew that the apostles were to give me this nail, and would cravenly run away from me. But I paid no attention to this, because my daughter, one who wants to do a work, must not pay attention to his own pains. On the contrary, he must make friends in the good times, when everything smiles around him, and he sows triumphs and prodigies at each step. Not only this, but he communicates the miraculous power to those who become his friends and disciples. Then everyone boasts of being a friend of one who is surrounded with glory and honor. Everyone hopes, and as many friends and disciples as one wants, so many one has, because the glory, the triumphs, the good times are powerful magnets that draw the creatures to follow the triumpher. Who wants to follow and be a friend or disciple of a poor one who is slandered, humiliated, and despised? No one. On the contrary, they feel fear and horror to get close and reach the point of denying the one whom they were friends with before, as St. Peter did with me. Therefore, it is useless to hope for friends when the poor creature finds herself under the nightmare of humiliations, scorns, and calumnies. So one must make friends when heaven smiles at us, and fortune would want to put us on a throne. If we want that the good, the works that are wanted, may have life and continuation in other creatures. By making friends when I was sowing miracles and triumphs, such that they reached the point of believing that I was to be their king on earth, and therefore having been my disciples, they were to occupy the first places before me, even though they abandoned me in my passion. When my resurrection sounded my full triumph, the apostles changed their mind. They reunited among themselves, and as triumphers, they followed my doctrine, my life, and formed the nascent church. Had I paid attention to the fact that they would run away from me, not making them my disciples in the time of my triumphs, I would not have had anyone who would speak of me after my death, who would make me known. Therefore, the good times, the glory, are necessary, and it is also necessary to receive piercing nails and to have patience in suffering them, in order to have the materials in my greatest works, so that they may have life in the midst of creatures. Now, has this not been a wholeness, a resemblance of my life, in your painful state of humiliation, of calumnies and scorns that you have gone through? I felt in you the nail of the abandonment and dispersion of my apostles being repeated to me. In seeing those who had been so keen to assist you, disperse themselves from you, and with the will of abandoning you. And in seeing you abandoned, I saw you all alone in my arms 
with the nail of the abandonment of those who were to sustain you. And in my sorrow I said, Bad world, how well you know how to repeat the scenes of my passion and my children. And I offered your bitterness for the triumph of my will and for the help of those who should make it known. Therefore, courage in the painful circumstances of life. However, know that your Jesus will never abandon you. I don't know how to do these things. My love is not voluble by nature, but firm and constant. And what I say with my mouth comes out from the life of my heart. Creatures, instead, they say one thing and feel another in their hearts. They mix many human ends also in making friends. And this is why they change according to the circumstances. So the dispersion of those who seem to want to lay down their lives in the good times and who cravenly run away in the time of humiliations and scorns. They are all effects of the human will. The human will is the true prison of the creature, and is clever in the art of being able to form many small rooms, but all without windows, because it is not skilled at forming openings in order to receive the good of light. Therefore, passions, weaknesses, fear, excessive worries, inconstancy, are as many dark rooms of its prison. And she remains now hampered in one, now in another. And fear makes her fear, and move away from the one who is laying down his life for love of her. On the other hand, one in whom my will reigns lives in my royal palace, in which there is so much light that the pains, the humiliations, the calumnies, are nothing other than stairs of triumphs and of glory, and completion of great and divine works. So, instead of running away from the poor martyr who has been cast into dust by the human perversity, she draws closer to him, waiting with patience for the hour of the new triumph, Oh, if my will had reigned fully in the apostles, with certainty they would not have run away in an hour in which I felt the need of their presence, of their faithfulness, in my so many pains. In the midst of enemies who wanted to devour me, I wanted my faithful ones close to me because there is no greater comfort than having a friend close in time of bitternesses. I would have seen in my dear apostles close to me the fruits of my pains, and oh, how many sweet memories would have arisen in my heart, which would have been balm for me in my intense bitternesses. My divine will, with its light, would have prevented their step from running away, and therefore they would have drawn closer around me. But since they lived in the dark prison of the human will, their mind was obscured. The heart became cold. Fear invaded them. In one moment, they forgot about all the good they had received from me. 
and not only did they run away from me, but they dispersed themselves from one another. All effects of the human will, which does not know how to maintain union, and knows only how to disperse in one day the good that one has done in many years with many sacrifices. Therefore, may your only fear be that of not doing my will. Fiat You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 29, Part 8. Fiat Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.